time for the news on BBC One with Martin Lewis. A June election fades away as the Conservatives lose almost 900 local councillors. Biggest gainers are the Liberal Democrats, astonished to find they have 520 more seats. Labour have 490 more, making big inroads into the Tories' southern heartlands. And the Bangladesh government confirms that the cyclone killed at least 100,000 of its people. Good evening. The ranks of Conservative councillors have been considerably depleted by local election results which disappointed the Tory party, stunned and delighted the Liberal Democrats, and had the Labour leadership demanding an immediate general election. The Prime Minister said he was in no hurry for that, and in any case, Labour had peaked and could not possibly win one. The Prime Minister was not really in murderous mood after his disappointing election night. After all, he is almost 15 months before he has to call a general election. He was merely presenting to the Imperial War Museum the rifle he was given on his post-war visit to the Gulf. John Major has two new worries. Liberal Democrat successes raise the fear that in a general election they would win some Tory seats themselves and let Labour win others. And Labour itself, after a barren decade in England's broad south, had swept back in places there last night. But he could not afford to sound depressed. Oh, a little disappointing, but quite bearable. Uh, and with a very uh, considerable silver lining, I think, it's, it's perfectly clear on last night's result that the Labour Party can't win an election. We are on the upswing, I think they have peaked. So last night was disappointing. I'm certainly sorry for those many good Conservative councillors who lost their seats. But I think it's a great deal to look forward to. I'll tell you what else you can do over here, eh? Yeah, please. Hey! Oh. <laughs> Neil Killock in Scotland today was clearly elated by his victories down south. He knows that the Conservatives dropped Margaret Thatcher because she was so far behind Labour for so long. But his own conviction is that he has a much better chance of defeating John Major. It's one of delight because all over in Wales we secured very substantial gains and even more so uh, we made great gains in the very areas where the future of the country will be decided, where the next government will be decided. And from Blackpool down to Southampton and from uh, East Anglia right across to Plymouth. Uh, via places like Nottingham and Luton, we really did establish ourselves as the leading party, and that will be reflected in the results of the general election. <laughs> Paddy Ashdown has made a virtue in this successful campaign of concentrating on local government, rather than guessing what the voters might do in a general election. Paddy Ashdown, the best political leader in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> But the Liberal Democrats, flushed by success, had a warning for the two bigger parties. What the Liberal Democrats are now doing is fashioning a powerful lever to bring fair votes to Britain. I mark that out for you as a point which we would pick up after the election. Fair votes must now come to our country. The people want it. We are determined to win it. And the other two parties had better get used to that idea. Although Conservative Central Office was putting its own optimistic gloss on the figures today, Chris Patton knows the Conservatives now face their sternest electoral test since 1979. But he clings to the belief that economic and other trends will restore Tory fortune. We've still got a year or more to go before we have to have a general election. Uh, I think that uh, most of the evidence suggests that people uh, do recognise that we're coming to a turning point uh, in the economy but I'm sure it's true that people want to see more evidence before they'll come out and vote for us uh, in the polling stations. They will come out and vote, vote in the polling stations come the next general election, because what's plain from last night, even though a lot of people voted Liberal Democrat, what's plain from last night is they don't want a Labour government. But Labour leaders are happy with the scale of the defeat the government suffered last night. What? <laughs> the Tories have lost control of Gilbert! <laughs> That's worth another <laughs> They believe the Conservatives
Conservatives have already played their two best cards, changing their leader and dropping the poll tax. Overall, there was an 8% swing in these constituencies from Conservative to Labour. A swing that would propel Neil Kinnock into Downing Street at the head of a majority Labour government. These figures are always fiendishly difficult to interpret. Last year, Kenneth Baker covered what's now admitted to have been a severe Conservative electoral reverse with a public relations triumph. This time, Labour have hit back with their own sample of constituencies and the Tories have counter-attacked with theirs. The only safe conclusions are that the government now has a lot of ground to win back, that the Liberal Democrats represent a newly dangerous threat in some places, and that Labour looks a more serious challenger for power than for many years. Now we'll look at the details of some of the projections being made from yesterday's voting. The BBC surveyed the local election results from 24 key constituencies, and looking at the change since the 1987 general election, they suggest the Conservatives are at 36%, down 7% on the last general election, Labour are 37%, up 5 with the Liberal Democrats on 21%, down 2% on when they fought as the Alliance, and others on 6%. This indicates that no party would have a majority in the House of Commons. The Labour Party's own survey 